Now, JavaScript has grown quite a bit in the last few years. What do you attribute that growth to? Uh, I, I think there's been a few things. Part of it is that, well, so like five years ago is essentially when jQuery came out. And jQuery had a while to come out, kind of battle out prototype, MooTools, etc. And, and then at some point it kind of won the, won the wars of, of JavaScript libraries. But at this point, uh, we're all trying to figure out how do we go and build web applications with jQuery. Um, and jQuery itself actually doesn't answer a lot of those questions. But then there started to be a lot more frameworks. The, I think the software engineers who figured out exactly how to build a bar, big apps with JavaScript, like went in, go, went created Google Closure, Dojo, Open Lazo, things like that. And so there was a second, a second wave where we had Backbone, Ember, Angular, all this kind of, all this new activity. And so now there's a lot of activity in like building web apps with JavaScript. Um, and we've also benefited a little bit, I think, from the decline, I guess you'd say, of Flash because there's been fantastic uh, ActionScript developers. Mm. And so those ActionScript developers have come over to JavaScript, okay. and we get to benefit a lot from kind of their development style. Um, and it's really, I think, uh, propelled kind of the JavaScript community and the existing libraries and frameworks that we're building on top of. Interesting. So what was it about JavaScript that initially attracted you to it? Um, I'd say, well, so I, I don't come from like a very strong programming background. Um, I, you know, I started as a web designer, and then I went into user experience design, and then I was like, "Well, I'll, you know, make the web app too." Um, so for me, uh, the thing that really got me excited about JavaScript was just the fact that I had it. It was very direct connection between my code and the user. Like I had a very direct influence on the feel of the interface, um, and and kind of. I had a very direct pathway to ensuring that it was fun to use, and you know, I was providing delight to my users. Sure. Um, and be, so, being able, so it was more so just being on the front end than being in JavaScript in particular. But the community in JavaScript has just been fantastic, and that's one of the the best things. I got active very early on on IRC in the jQuery community, and that's kind of what has propelled me to learn more and get better in the at my craft. So switching gears a little bit, Chrome's dev tools, yeah. it's, a, it's a very robust tool set. I mean, do you feel that those dev tools are as important as the browser itself? Um, well, to a developer, almost. Um, there's a lot, I, looking back, uh, we had alerts, and we were just you know throwing an alert and like figure out what the value is. And uh, now we're getting into a place where we have a lot of uh, instrumentation available inside the browser telling us what's going on. And so now, like the priorities as far as the developer, we often get distracted in like building a built, like building a, a fantastic architecture. But really, what is important is providing a great user experience. And to do that, we need to make sure that things you know load fast, react fast. And so using the the dev tools. Uh, to, to measure and then optimize for those cases has become very, very important. Um, and so the, the pace of evolution inside the Chrome DevTools, what we're seeing from the Firefox DevTools team, um, it's very, very fast. And so, I mean, th there's a lot more to go um, as we kind of make sure that the, the DevTools are tracking kind of not just building websites, but building very large web apps. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's a really exciting place right now. Last question for you. How do you judge new web app development tools? I mean, do you have a formal process? Or? Uh, I think for me, it's interesting. I think what it comes down to is, is the developer ergonomics, right? Like, how does this improve my workflow? Uh, a good example is Adobe Shadow. So Adobe Shadow uh, lets me watch, it basically lets me connect like some mobile devices to my desktop, and as I like, browse around on my desktop, my mobile devices are also browsing to those pages as well. Mm -hmm. Sounds kind of trivial. Um, I can open, also open up a little inspector uh, on those things. Um, but just the fact that with a couple of clicks, I now have my devices on my desk that follow me around as I go to test suites, as uh, I see what the, my responsive design is like. I don't have to touch anything, and it's all just working. Mm -hmm. And so 
getting a feel for how it integrates in your workflow has been is really the most important thing. Um, and so for me, it's really a matter of making sure that I'm using these tools in a workflow that makes sense, using them either when I'm iterating in development or when I'm uh, in a testing uh, cycle or when I'm trying to improve performance and figuring out at what point in the cycle of build, in the life cycle of building a web app I can use this uh, is really the best way for me to figure out how, how to use the tool and if it fits well for, for my style. Great. Well, thanks for joining us. Cool. Thanks, Matt.